Do you love the shape of the Hilux but need extra seats for the family? Do you love the four wheel drive capabilities of the Prado but don't like its bulk? Then the Toyota Fortuna Crusade might be a happy compromise. This competes against other series four wheel drives like the Mitsubishi Pajero Sport and Ford Everest. I've been driving this for the last week with my family. Stay watching to see what I've discovered. Let's look at pricing. There are three models to choose from for the Fortuna and the Crusade sits at the top. There has been a minor price hike from the previous model, but you can pick this up for around $63,000 before on-road costs, which does make it quite competitive for the market. You do get some nice features for your cash, like electric front heated leather seats, power tailgate, and a three zone climate control. This model has also been fitted with the optional tow bar kit, which includes a tow bar, tow ball, and trailer wiring for an extra $13.50. If you're after more details, the full specs are on the written review at carsguide.com.au. Practicality wise, there's plenty of space up front. The seats are very comfortable and will keep you well cushioned on a long journey. I do like the heat function, but you can't customize the heat level like you can on other cars. The storage up front is pretty good and I really like the double glove box. Very welcome. I also am quite a fan of little hidden cup holders. So the cup holders in the dash were both practical and fun for me. The dash is a mix of harder plastics and soft touch points, but it looks well suited for a capable off-roader. I like the traditional gear shifter handbrake and that you can manually reset the clock. It's pretty old school. The tech can feel a bit retro though, and not in a good way. That eight inch touchscreen multimedia system, is a bit small for the market now and the graphics a bit plain and can sometimes be laggy it has wired apple carplay and it was easy to connect my phone to it surprisingly for a family vehicle there's only one usb a port in the whole car you do get a couple of 12 volt ports and a very handy 220 volt port though the back seat is firm but still comfortable and i'm loving how good the legroom is back here the headroom is okay for my height, but I'm only 168 centimeters or five foot six. So extra tall passengers may not agree. The amenities are okay, but I do find that the map pockets and storage bins are on the shallow side. I do really like the directional air vents in the ceiling. I feel like they're well positioned. My six year old had no trouble climbing in and out of this because of the wide side steps and really enjoyed his view from the high seating position. There are Isofix mounts on the outboard seats plus two top tethers, which means you're only going to get two child seats back here. There's plenty of room for front passengers though when a zero to four rearward facing child seat is installed. It's actually pretty easy to access the third row compared to other seven seaters on the market because of this cool tumble forward function. However, even though the leg room back here is a lot better than some seven seaters on the market, the headroom is tight. So I would keep these as sometimes seats for adults or older kids. Plus, besides the directional air vents in the ceiling, there's no other amenities. The third row are stored on the side, which is unusual to see on newer cars. They also create quite a big blind spot on an already chunky C pillar. They're very light though. My six year old was able to handle them without my help. When the third row is in use, you get 200 liters of space. Pop it back up and that jumps up to 716 liters, which is a little bit lower than some other SUVs on the market. Impressively, you get a full size spare in this and very handy to have the power tailgate. It's just a little bit slow. Under the bonnet, this has a 2.8 litre four cylinder turbo diesel engine with a maximum output of 150 kilowatts and a massive 500 newton meters of torque. It has up to 3.1 tonnes of brake to towing capacity, meaning most weekend adventures can be pursued. The six speed auto transmission is fairly smooth and I like that you can flip it over into four wheel drive mode if the need arises. Having that torque this week was fantastic because I hit a lot of winding mountain roads and it was easy to keep my speed consistent, which isn't always the case for a large SUV. The official combined fuel consumption is 7.6 litres per 100 kilometres. Real world testing saw my figure at 9.1 litres and that was after mountain, urban and open road driving. 
So it's pretty efficient for such a big beast, but let's see how it drives. The turbo diesel engine has a lot of grunt and it doesn't feel like you're digging deep for that power either, which I really liked. Occasionally the pickup isn't great in this, so it's not something I'd be zipping across traffic in. And the steering. The steering is quite heavy at low speeds, which makes this feel older than what it is and quite cumbersome in car parks. Also, I just don't like the steering wheel. The leather is quite hard under the hands and it's got this weird slippery wood panel up top, which is an odd combo to have when, you know, you're in an off-roader and you want to feel very much in control. This has a taller center of gravity, so you're going to get quite a bit of rolling corners, but it's not the sort of car that you're going to tackle corners hard in anyway, so that wasn't surprising. I really like the forgiving suspension. You're going to go over potholes and bumps without really registering them, which is great. So A plus for that Aussie tuning. This has a 360 degree view camera, but for a top spec model, it's quite blurry, which I was disappointed in. And honestly, that just leans into that feeling that the tech might feel a little bit behind for the market. Because of its size though, it's actually pretty easy to park. Even though the driving is a mixed experience, the safety sheet is solid. And a highlight is the automatic collision notification system that will alert Toyota's emergency assistance call center if an airbag is deployed or a collision detected on the impact sensors. This has seven airbags, by the way, which includes a driver's knee airbag and curtain airbags that cover that third row. It has a maximum five-star ANCAP safety rating, but it was done a little while ago in 2019. It's always good to consider ongoing costs. And the Fortuna comes with a five year unlimited kilometer warranty, which is standard for the market. Surprisingly though, it only has a three year cap price servicing plan. Services are reasonable though at $290 per service. Servicing intervals are painful at every six months or 10,000 kilometers, whichever occurs first. After a week of driving the Toyota Fortuna Crusade, did it have a podium finish for my family? Not quite. The driving performance is mixed and not being able to have that third child seat will limit flexibilities for younger growing families. The way the third row does tuck away makes the boot a bit awkward to use. Combine that with the retro feeling tech and short intervals for servicing and it could be improved upon, especially in a market where, you know, it's surging forward on those elements. I did like the high driving position, safety features and forgiving suspension. So this gets a six and a half out of 10 from me. My son really liked the red hot color and that he didn't need my help to get in and out of it. So he gives it an eight out of 10. If you're after more details, check out the detailed written review at carsguide.com.au and I'll see you next week.